All right, hello, Metal Maniacs. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. I am absolutely thrilled today. I am chatting with the one and only, the indelible Kate French of Vainglory and ex Chastain and ex, um, you know, going way back, Tantrum as well. Uh, Kate, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I am here in Georgia and it is raining and like 93 degrees, but uh, I'm doing good. Nice, nice. <laughs> We're releasing a new album, by the way. We got yes. a double. I know. I'm so excited. It's like my whole life with uh, Vainglory. You know, Vainglory was actually a, a Leviathan Records, which is Chastain. And that's how I met my husband, who I'm with now. So it's it's my history with Vainglory. And it just released today. It just dropped. We're actually pre-sailing it now. Or, or we're not pre-sailing it. It just pre-sale just ended. And we're going and uh, we're doing some signed autograph stuff. Too, oh, on um on the Vainglory MySpace or MySpace can't MySpace MySpace. Oh, you're going way back. <laughs> I know I'm going way back uh, <laughs> on the Facebook page. So um yeah, uh we're doing that right now. So if anybody's interested in a uh, signed autograph poster with a double CD for the price of a single, um yes. yeah, hit us up and let us know because uh it's just it's my history. And it's something that I'm real glad is is being released. It's on uh, No Dust Records in Europe and Animated Insanity Records in the United States. And uh, I just feel blessed that they, you know, have picked us up. And um, Benjamin Niebla, who is our manager, got us this this connection. And uh, and the booklet is beautiful. It's really nice. And I'm just really happy about it. So very cool, very cool. And so yeah, yeah like as you said, so it's it's. Um... Of course, the um, manifesto. Oh, by the way, cheers. Oh, yeah, cheers, cheers. Because this is brews, right? See, I didn't yeah. have a brew, but my uh, my son, he's 25, and he brought this home. And I'm like, oh, you got some Jack. That. I'll, there I'll you celebrate go. because I am celebrating. I, I lost, like I told you before, I lost like 30 pounds. Cheers and I haven't had any alcohol or any sugar, so I might as well have a little a yeah. little with you since it's bruised yeah so, and uh, and you're celebrating the 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 release the, of the album so that's and the release and the release uh, yeah yeah which is great so it's um you know as you mentioned so it's 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 your history with the band so it's it's um uh you know manifest destiny which came out i believe in 2019 and then mm -hmm. the self-titled uh album which was from wow like 2006 that seven, 2000, 2007 yeah around there 2008 or so yeah. uh yeah but it is the history of vainglory of me being here in atlanta i moved to atlanta it was just a, such a funny story um <laughs> i was i was in the uh process of having a divorce in california and uh i was doing the last album it was my divorce album with chastain oh. it's called in an outrage hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so i was telling doing, that's telling i know so i was doing the album um and this this uh tape had to come across or the cd my way and and david chastain from leviathan is like you want to audition for this band and uh it's another you know it's a guitar virtuoso guy i'm like i don't want to fucking do that again i mean everybody's a guitar virtuoso that i sang with that. and i thought okay well i'll listen to it so i listened to it and i shelved it for a while and i was like eh. and uh then i i thought you know this is this is really good i'm gonna check this out and start writing to it so i started listening to it in my minivan <laughs> with my, my my son in the back and he was really young and um and then I started to reach out to Corbin and um, or try to reach out to him because I really wanted to work with him. I started to really like the music and David was kind of not having it a little bit. So there was a little pushback. Hmm. And then Corbin was trying to do the same thing on his end and trying to reach out to me. And we finally got to where we you know found each other. And then we really started to do the audition. Well, he had someone he had been with for years and years. And I kind of we started talking on the phone because I had this machine that was called the 2480 that I had to record these demos on. And I didn't really know how to work it very well. And uh, something clicked and something happened. And and then he's like, well, you know, I've got this girlfriend, but we're not doing too hot. <laughs> You're getting a divorce. Why don't you come out here? And so that's how the whole thing started. And in 2003, um, I flew out to Atlanta and um, everything clicked. <laughs> nice <laughs> nice that's great yeah that, that's a, i mean 
I think I think uh, if I may be so bold, I think clicked is an understatement. I think your vocals with Corbin's riffs are magical. I think they fit so well together. And nothing against you know the previous singer on the the first album, but I think yeah. I think you and Corbin have uh, just this electricity, this chemistry that really works well, especially on that first album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's fire. Yeah, it's yeah, it, fire. It, it was, and it was a great time too. You know, I, I, I was leaving everything behind in California, and it was really a tough time. But it was kind of something. And my ex was just not, you know, he he was wanting to go on tour and do his own thing. And he, Larry Howe, he's in Vicious Rumors. I don't know if you know who oh. Vicious Rumors is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he plays drums for Vicious Rumors, and he kind of. It was never really like about it. You know, he kind of wanted to go and, and be a single guy and do his thing. And I think that's, that's fine. He's actually doing that to this day, you hmm. know? So, um, so we separated and I, I came out here and, uh, and, and we somehow, I didn't have a, anything and, and we somehow got a brand new house and we somehow made things happen. And my son had a brand new school and everything was beautiful. And it was just a really phenomenal time. And then we got you know, a band together and they were nice people. And we were just jamming all the time and, and having a great time. So it was a great time back then. So that's kind of probably why that album is a little bit fire. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. it, it was fire. I mean, we were in the first couple of years of our relationship and you know how that goes. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had a great time and uh now we just want to you know <laughs> you know now uh it's what 20 years later and uh we're still here uh and we're still working on music together we just did a song the other day uh, oh nice but yeah it was a great time and um and the first album was a lot of fun nice nice yeah and it's yeah it's a great album and I, I, I both albums are are fantastic i i really enjoy both of them i think there's um just so much going on um like i said i think i think the i think your vocals and and those riffs just blend so well together you know i mean your work with chastain was incredible as well but i think this just there's such a a richness to it a complexity to it that i i really dig um yeah have you heard any of that we've got brand new stuff too that's coming out now and we're planning on doing another album we just talked about it today I want to do something that's full adrenaline that when you put it in, it's just like driving music. I don't know what I want to call it, like a a drive adrenaline, or I don't know what it is. I know um, some other band had adrenaline, but um, yeah, we're working on something new now um, that's along those lines. But, um, you know, as we, as we get older and figure out more about technology, we're learning more about how to broaden the sound and Corbin's a producer now. Hmm. Uh, and that meaning, I mean, he does the broad spectrum of everybody. He's done some country, but I don't know if you know who like Ritz is or um, Tech Nine, but he did a song for them that went number one on the hip hop charts. So he's he's broadening that. We're learning more about sound and more about, you know, frequency and how to broaden that sound and make it bigger. So on this last song that we did together, we did this freaking huge sub bass heavy metal thing i don't know if you've heard it's called scream it but um you know speaking of the the way that sound is we're learning how to you know make that a lot bigger it's kind of like a female lincoln park hip-hop or i don't know it's not rap or anything like that there's none of that but kind of his kind of voice with the with the low sub bass so it's really interesting um and and that was the start of things but corbin uh you know is amazing and he's an amazing instrumentalist and you've heard him play so you know he had a a representation from dean markley on uh, that album for uh decapitation attack on the first vainglory they picked it up and uh, we used to license to tv too and it's so funny on that metal show when ingve came on they had ingve's entry you know the the intro music that came on and it's supposed to be ingve but it was corbin (laughs) Oh, interesting. I did not know yeah. that. That's so cool. he's like, that's my tune. Wow. Uh, so, you know, uh, he's just a really good uh, musician all around. And he also sings. He's also doing some uh, country stuff right oh, now. So he's a great singer. He's really good at that as well. Uh, but yeah, as we get older, we're learning more about how to how to broaden that. And that the evolution of Vainglory is from, you know, beginning to end becoming, you know, what it will be. 
And so I'm excited about the next one. Yeah, that's really exciting news. Do you, do you, and maybe this is way too early to, uh, to discuss this. Do you have a kind of a target date of when you want to get material out or at this point, are you kind of looking for? Um, probably sometime next year, late okay. next year. Nice. nice. Yeah. Cause, um, you know, we're working on, on different things. He just, it, it just kind of depends on how it works out. The workflow of things is really difficult. This last album, Manifesting Destiny that we did, you know, we had so much in between as a, you know, someone that owns a home and that pays a mortgage, you know, you, you have to, you have to work and you gotta, you know, make ends meet. And I had to do that on the last album. So it took us like, you know, a long time to finish the last album. And uh, so we don't want to repeat of that where it's, you know, 10 year, cause we're, we'll be freaking 70 by the next <laughs> thing is done. So, uh, so faster than the last one, definitely. We'll try to get it done within a year's time. I'm doing this two week song uh, project thing that I'm doing, you know, a song every two weeks to kind of, you know, gauge myself as to finishing, you know, because I think a lot of times when you start something, you don't finish it. And that's, that's a big no, no. I, I've learned that. And everybody that was popular when we were popular back in 2008 had finished their stuff you know had finished their cds and they were on to like the third one and i was like what the fuck you know why are we <laughs> why are we done with this but we had a lot of stuff that we were doing in between i was working i worked for at&t and i was making money and um you know so i i was doing things that i had to do to pay the bills because that's a fucking harsh reality of life yeah, you know, yeah. I, think I wish like, yeah i could just do music though you know wouldn't that be nice yeah. just to do what you love? Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. And I think I think that's the kind of the misnomer that a lot of fans have is that we don't understand, you know, unless it's like a big giant band, you know, like Iron Maiden or something, that there are a lot of bands that uh, you know, these people, you know, people in these bands are working day jobs, you know, full time yeah. day jobs, you know. Yeah, I mean, just about everybody is, you yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, I have a friend and actually, I mean, we're we're kind of on the ass right now, but I have a friend, his name is Matt Camacho and he works, uh, he does Forbidden. Oh yeah. I don't know. And he's a bassist for Forbidden and he, he's a, a mortuary. He runs a mortuary during the day. Oh really? I did not know that. <laughs> I'm like, wow. How the fuck are there? You know, he does embalming and shit. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Um, but you know, everybody does something different to, you know, make ends meet. And yeah, we all, have to do it i mean i don't i don't really know how, how some of these people do this you know online or touring and stuff I, you know they're they're gone you just have to be a vagabond i guess because i know they're not making a shit ton of money yeah my ex-husband is a prime example of that you know they take their van and they go from place to place or they get a ticket to europe and then they take a van with something connected and they sleep in the van and they don't make any money you know, and then they just go home to to nothing. And it's just, that's kind of a vagabond. I guess it's just, you know, when I think about it, I guess they just really love music. You know, I guess yeah. that's, you really have to be a lover of music to to do the things that, that you know, you do when they don't make a whole lot of money. And um, I want to do that. I've done uh, voiceovers. I've been doing voiceovers and radio and things like that. Cool. Just doesn't make a whole lot of money though. You know, as much as if you were going to go into work and do some kind of a nine to five. So. Um, but uh, I'm trying to work it in, uh, and uh, that's my dream, <laughs> you know, to be able to do music and uh, just do that alone and and make a living at it. Yeah, well, I you love know, the fact that you're 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 doing these, you know, songs every two weeks. I think that's that's great. Yeah, think. well, it forces you anything that's forcing you, like you're doing your podcast. You yeah. know, sometimes you probably don't feel like doing it, but you're going and you're doing it anyway. I have a podcast too. Uh, and which I've been slacking on, <laughs> I'm such a slacker. But you know, I mean, you've got fans probably on your podcast that listen in, and and that kind of forces you when you get a following to do something. And I think that any completion of anything is a great thing, you know. So you're yeah. completing what you're doing. I got to get back on that and do that. But uh, it does help when you finish something that is important to you. So yeah, I'm doing this. I have this song will come out this weekend. This new one is called Technicolor Blue. And it's just about life. Um, the songs that I do are, are you know, they're pop or they're um, like, this one's kind of Pink Floyd-ish. Oh, um, nice. I've done metal songs. Uh, I don't do, I don't do country. I've done some country stuff in the past too, like some Carrie Underwood type stuff. 
Okay. <laughs> and that's a, that, it's just such a, when you do these different things, it forces you into these different, you know, uh, thought processes and, and you learn so much from everything that you do, like in doing what you're doing, you're learning how to edit, you know, your audio and you're learning what to say. And a lot of times in my podcast, I don't know about you, but I learned what I speak like and what I, what I want to hear out of myself and what I don't, like I say, so, uh, so, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. So I have to write like that down. Don't say that. Don't <laughs> you know that. what I mean? Do you hear that in yourself too? I do. You... I, I actually have a really hard time listening to myself so when i do when i edit it's 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 i just cringe <laughs> like i'm like yeah oh my god i can't believe i said that i can't believe i did this you know right right it's, right it's you do. and there are times i don't listen to, i can't listen to the entire interview it's more i look for you know if i know there was a glitch or you know especially a technological glitch or something right like yeah, i gotta fix that yeah. yeah but i once i post it i never go back i can't you know and i probably should just to yeah, I try, I, mean, I try to get better, but are you on Spotify? Uh, I'm not. No, get on Spotify. Get okay. on Spotify because I'm on Spotify. I um and I I subscribe. I mean, I I'm a subscriber, so I enjoy listening to podcasts. I'd love to listen to your podcast on Spotify, hmm. and you should listen to yourself because it gives you an opportunity to listen to you know what you want to say. And I I haven't been doing it enough. I like I said, I've kind of flaked on it, uh, but it really gives you a chance to examine yourself. And, and from that examination of yourself, you grow. Yeah. You know, you grow every time you do something. So uh, what, what, where's your podcast on? Is it on YouTube? Is that what you? Yeah. Mainly YouTube. And, and then, um, you know, I'll post it on Facebook and you nice. know, Twitter and Instagram and all of those. That's things. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. You've been doing it a long time. Uh, not too long. So my page has been around for 10 years or so, but as wow. far as like, uh, video interviews I've been doing only in the last, well, I guess it was around 2020. It was when everything kind of shut down and I was home yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah, and I couldn't go to, I couldn't do live interviews. So I, I used to do live interviews and record them and actually type them up like an idiot. <laughs> so they were just written and it yeah. would take me hours to type these things up. And then finally, I'm like, I should record this. Like, what am I doing? Like, I should do a video, that, you know, so I uh, yeah. started doing those when, uh, yeah, when the, during the pandemic and it just kind of, you know, I've been, I've continued to do it. So that's good. That's, yeah. that's really good. I used to do a, a TV show. Uh, we do at teleprompters and whatnot uh, called Rock This in Sacramento. It was cable in Sacramento. Oh, and, then cool. that, and then I I did the radio thing. When I did the radio thing, it was pre-recorded. Mm. And, you know, I always, I, I have Reaper, I edit all my audio and I do all that kind of shit. Um, but, uh, so I know what you're talking about. I used to write it down. My boss, the the, the station director used to get so fucking pissed at me. <laughs> He'd be like, <laughs> you sound like you're reading. And then I got really good at reading and he's like, that sounds great. Oh, nice. Um, but it just didn't last, um, for very long. I can't remember exactly what happened, but I ended up going and doing something else, but it was fun doing, doing radio. Um, I haven't done, I did interviews when I was. Uh, young there was this place called blue moon productions it was like a it was like a venue in sacramento um and um for rock this we would go in and we would interview the people and mostly the guys would just give me a horrible hard time and pinch my butt and do stuff like that and because oh, no. <laughs> they were all friends of mine you know i i it's so funny i have so many uh, male friends just throughout the years and guys that are just friends, not, not, you know, guys that I ever did anything with, but we've maintained a friendship throughout the years. Um, I guess just cause I'm in the rock scene and it's mostly a male dominated, you know, thing. So, I mean, I have so many uh, male friends, so they would give me a hard time when I would go and, and interview them. So I know how it feels and you write shit down and you'd be like trying to be serious. Right. <laughs> uh, and then you just go off the cuff and then you finally say, fuck it, I'm just going to do what I feel. And it always turns out the best, you know, when you do. What yeah, you feel. I agree. Yeah. I think that's true. So um, you, you brought up some interesting things that I want to, that I want to chat about. So one, um, so are you post, you, I it's, think you said you're posting this music every you're, you know, every, every two weeks, weeks every two. So where do you post this? So I post it on my Facebook page and the whole thing is on my Facebook page. Okay. So what I'm going to do, my goal is to get up to, I have a, I have a record company and it's called Rebellion Records US. It's something I licensed a couple years ago to license to other, um, other countries to get 
you know, our stuff all over the world. Um, when we didn't have, we got dropped from Leviathan because it was just kind of a conflict of interest. And um, so uh, what I'm doing is Rebellion Records. I'm, I'm taking 10 songs and then I'm going to put it out on Spotify and put it out on, you know, the um, Spotify and, and iTunes because collectively, it, um, if you do a bunch of songs, it's not real expensive. But if you do one song, it's just a slight bit less than if you do a bunch. So when I get to 12 songs, I'll go through Rebellion Records on BMI. Um, and I have a lifetime membership with BMI and then we'll, uh, put those out through Spotify and, and through, you know, every, everybody that way. And then I'll collect royalties on, you can do, um, you know, small portions of the music for TV shows or, or whatever licensing. So that's what I'm, the plan is, and that's my goal. And really right now, what I'm doing is I'm in pre-production. So you force yourself to do something for these two weeks, you know, and then, you get it to the best of your ability and then you you tweak it you know you might want to add some guitars or you might want to do something different or, or juxtapose it and use the vocals or you might want to do this or that so it's a pre-production and then by the time it's all over we'll have the final product and then we can post it and then we can use it and then it'll be under kate french cool. so um i have a couple artist songs right now i have an artist page on spotify but you know, I'm 54 years old now and i really want to do some solo stuff i want to do kate french I want to do me. And so um, that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing, you know, stuff that I'm creating because sometimes I feel like, you know, when you don't fully create something, it's not really all, you know, it's not you, it's not. And so I want to have that. And I think it's a, a legacy thing too, for, you know, my family, maybe my grandkids will want to hear what I did, you know, uh, cool. <laughs> when I'm, when I'm dead and gone. And so I have this, uh, these this goal and uh, just have my own catalog of songs and right now i have a bunch i mean i i listen to my stuff too on um spotify like a, you know an hour and a half two hours and i think that's pretty fucking cool you yeah. know to be able to have a catalog of stuff and for you you got your catalog of podcasts and your your catalog of things that you've done and that's that's amazing you can go back and look at that history and listen to yourself and remember that time yeah. you know your kids can and uh, I think that's invaluable. I think that's a very cool thing. So that's what I'm trying to do is, um, you know, become a solo artist and get that out there. And that's, that's my goal with these two week little things that I'm doing. I love that. And you play all the instruments as well. I do. As, everything. As everything. Really we have, cool. um, I have my setup actually right behind me here. So um, I do um, it's just all kinds of different drums. We have software and I play keyboards. You can't see my keyboards, right? It's right here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I like have it. that, and then I have Reaper, which is my uh, digital audio workstation. And you can see the little blips, and you you're very familiar with that. You yeah. know what that is? That's audio. So that's uh, the song that I'm working on right now. We've been working on it today, and um, you know, every time we do something, then there's another thing that goes on with this too. I learn a different thing, so I'm learning, um, you know, compression, or I'm learning. Uh, you know, how, uh, how to harmonic balance or, you know, I'm learning a lot about sound from Corbin. So that's the, the big goal too, is to be an independent um, producer and an independent uh, mastering, you know, be able to, to master my own shit and to yeah, cool. mix my own shit and to, you know, um, just do everything myself. Cause I don't fucking want to depend on anybody. You mm. know, I don't want to, I want to, I want to sing my stuff. I do it all remotely. I do it all myself. You know, I'll punch myself in. I decide what sounds good. I decide my vision, what I want, what I don't want. If I want a harmony, I decide all that. And from beginning to end, from the drum tone to the guitar sound to the, whatever I want, it's all me. And I love doing that. I love that it it is me, you know, that no one can take that away, that that no one can say, oh, I did that. No, no, you didn't. I did it. <laughs> Just like <laughs> painting, you know, like we were talking about earlier when you're doing paintings, you know, that's a that's your representation. And I know that you're an awesome artist because you're doing an album cover, oh. right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're all humble. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's Thank really cool. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Yeah. About it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just having that for yourself that you can look back on it when you're 90 years old yeah. and say that you did. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, great. Cheers. That's, that's cheers. Yeah, we cheers. cheers. Clunk. Cheers. Yep. Click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is great. That is great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, so 
you you've you've touched you know, we've talked a little bit about you know your your time in Sacramento you know growing up in Sacramento but so yeah so take me in the let's let's take a ride in the way back machine Ooh. and uh yeah yeah tell me about yeah what were your beginnings in music how did you come from a musical family like what was the impetus for you to to start singing well yeah i mean my mom and dad were both into music now they weren't musicians I got into that, but, um, you know, from an early age, I mean, my, my mom and dad listened to music all the time. So they were, had, my dad was like a credence freak. Can mm. you hear the credence clear water in me? <laughs> I was like rocking out to my horse on my horse, you know, to credence, <laughs> yeah, a little spring loaded you. horse. I flipped that shit over. <laughs> I did. I flipped it over. I was rocking out to credence and I flipped the whole thing over. Oh, man. But I used to sit and listen to the music for hours that, and, um, I listened to a lot of Beatles stuff and uh just you know yeah it was always music on um from a very early age but really um a funny thing and I just did an interview before you and I was talking about this and um I wanted to be a drummer you oh, know okay. that was my thing and so in, in fourth grade they had band and they had these auditions and you know I was all excited I was gonna bring it be my drummer gonna bring my drumsticks in I had my drumsticks I'd been practicing I walk in there's like 20 dudes wanting to be drummers <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there's like a line of 20 guys. They all want to be drummers. So the band director was like, no, you cannot be a drummer. You are on the baritone horn. <laughs> so I got this big brass baritone horn bass clef instrument. But the great thing about that is that I, I learned how to read music. Mm. You know, I wasn't just... Uh, it wasn't just time signature, you know, I wasn't doing, yeah. uh, you know, taps. I wasn't doing anything. My, my son is actually a, um, my son is actually someone that he directs, uh, high school bands and high school band drum lines oh, good specifically. For him. So he writes music for them. So all, all he does is, is music, you know, staffs out drums for marching bands. He's doing that right now, uh, for a local high school here, but he does it for, you know, all different kinds of high schools. So anyway, I started baritone horn and uh, then I went and played the trombone as well. Um, you know, not the most glamorous instruments. And especially when you're, you know, uh, 10 years old and you're trying to lug this huge gigantic horn, you know, for you, cause I was tiny home. I would like step, 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 put it down, sit on it. <laughs> step, 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 you know, when I was trying to carry the horn home, but I remember going in my room and, and, you know, it wasn't, anything that was glamorous or anything like a guitar but I would I would staff out notes and write songs back then so uh, that and then also in fourth grade I went and I got into choir so I was into you know you have to read music when you're in choir so I I you know and I loved harmony I think that's where I really got into it just hearing harmony I love harmony to this day, I love harmony. I, I would love to sing. I'd love to sing with people and harmonize with them. There's such a, there's such a, like a source energy about that where you can vibrate that way and you can, you know, harmonize with someone and feel that thing that goes on. It's incredible. So I was in a choir and we were doing solfeggio and these really complicated pieces and to feel when you, you know, you did a three or four part harmony and you're all belting out at the same time, uh, it, you know, it's just an incredible thing. So that's really what got me started. And then I was in, you know, band throughout high school till I discovered boys at, you know, like 15 and, and partying. <laughs> and then that was over. <laughs> True story. Um, but I had fun there. You know, that's when you learn your social skills right. and you at the parties. <laughs> and without that, you really can't do shit because if you can't connect with people, you know, you can't get to anywhere in music because you're not able to go and socialize. So I've definitely got the gift of gab. I definitely, um, I love to talk to people. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's where I started. And, uh, you know, I, I, so I know theory and, um, you know, and as far as the guitar goes, I've been playing guitar since I was, uh, I think I got, I had this roommate that gave me a guitar when I was 18 years old. But the thing is, is that I, I didn't really find it interesting as far as lead playing. Now, a lot of people love to play single notes, but I like chords and songs. I wanted to sing over what I was doing. And I think in hindsight that I didn't want to be a soloist because of the fact that I love to sing. And when you're going, dee, 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 or dee, 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 you can't really sing over that too much. Yeah, you know? So yeah. I, I've been writing songs and I have a 12 string. I have my 12 string here and I have a, an SG and uh, I have a um, 
ILTD downstairs and I've had, you know, a lot of guitars through the years, but I'm not a guitarist. I'm a singer first. And then, um, you know, all these instruments are used to, to layer stuff. Um, and I'm really into a uh, composition and strings right now. I'm into, uh, I'm into Kip Winger. <laughs> oh, there you go. Great guitar. Um, they've actually came out with a new album. It's called seven. And, but I, I'm into them because, um, uh, he does orchestration. Yeah. for ballet as well and um i i have become kind of fascinated with strings i've always loved strings i used to go into um guitar center you know or anything i'd play string you know keyboard i play keyboard so i'd be playing the string sounds give me that good string sound mm -hmm. and i've always been really infatuated with that so this song that i'm working on now is a lot of layering of strings and things like that and um mm. very much thought provoking so i want to do something that's more um substantive in my later years you know uh, w when i'm writing i want it to really mean something depthful i have a concept album i've got right now that i'm working on it's called depth perception oh, cool. and so it's I, i'm going to have different facets of of what i do and that will be the stuff that you know people that don't want to hear uh you know talk about you know uh the deep stuff you know that'll be specific to that album and then i'll do something that's more rock or metal uh, or pop or, you know, but I'm going to have different things that I'm going to do that are going to be, um, you know, in different categories. And um, this will probably be the depth of perception thing where, um, you know, it gets really down into life and into this is, um, you know, remembering how it used to be when we were young. And it, it talks about, you know, how you, you didn't have a you know, you didn't think about things. You didn't think about, you know, the care and and uh, and the world. And then the second verse is more of, you know, you you don't think about the fact that when when you're there with someone, that tomorrow they might be dead. You know what I mean? They might be gone. And then the conclusion is, you know, the forgiveness and and coming to terms with the fact that you know you don't have to hold on to things and you can let them go. But um, Technicolor Blue is just life when everything was new. And and uh, so so that's my deep thoughts. Yes, I <laughs> love it. That's cool. Really so, cool. Uh, yeah, I uh, I like music. Nice. Yeah. A whole I, lot. I, and metal, metal, I love metal. You know, metal is my uh, heart. I tried to go away to play, you know, I played coffee houses for a while when I was with Larry. I'd get my 12 string and I'd go into a coffee house and I'd be like, kumbaya, you know, on the guitar <laughs> and whatnot. But then I just wanted to rip stuff out, <laughs> you know, and then I had to go back and, you know, do some, some heavy stuff. So that's kind of part of me, you know, that, that thing. Um, that's just instilled in me and that when you sing that kind of way it, it's so therapeutic you know have yeah. you are you a singer or anything no i am uh i am probably the worst singer ever um, oh no I'm you can terrible sing. singer you, i love music i love music but i cannot sing to save but my you life. sing in your car right oh yeah yeah there sing in the go. car so i don't torture well, anybody else but yeah um, i think everybody should sing i think it's such a release you know it's so therapeutic you know, yeah. and nobody's perfect. I mean, you, you, I, I'm off pitch all the fucking time. I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, and, and I mean, I've gotten better as I got older because I've just done it all the time. When you do something like you podcast, you know, you're going to get better at anything that you yeah. do all the time. Um, but it's a great release, huh? When you're in your car singing, which, what do you blast? What is your favorite thing? Oh, uh, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Maiden fan, Iron Maiden. Are you? Yeah. So, and I definitely can't, I mean, very few people can sing like Bruce Dickinson. So I definitely cannot at all. Um, yeah. but I have a, I have a friend that's in Iron Maidens, Linda. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so she does that, you know, all the time they do the Iron Maidens thing. I was actually supposed to go on tour with them a long time ago. I wasn't supposed to, she asked me to go, um, to the Middle East they, oh, somebody wasn't going to go or something. And she called me, I was in Vallejo um, with visitation with Larry. Cause we always flew back and forth, even though we moved out here, I always wanted, you know, him to have see Trev and everything. And we were out there and she's like, dude, let's go. We're going to go to uh, like Saudi Arabia or something for the USO or do something. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I thought that would have been fun. You know, I like Bruce Dickinson oh. a lot. I met him. Uh, a long time ago, and I was telling someone about that the other day, too. I was at Foundations Forum. Uh, in fact, it was the year that I got signed, and uh, the president of Mercury Records was talking with me, and we were just bullshitting. And I 
I was playing the professional role. You know, I had my like briefcase type thing with my collared shirt and I was, you know, trying to be pretty professional and trying to pull that. And I'm like talking to him about some publishing or something that I was doing. And uh, Bruce Dickinson comes running up. This little bouncy guy. He's like, hey, dude, what you doing? Other than talking to the guy. <laughs> and I looked over and I had a double take. I was like, whoa, that oh, fucking wow. Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, that that so cool. He's so tiny. And, uh, but he was a really nice guy. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, he's talented as shit. Yeah. He's you know, and with everything, he flies planes. He's doing his fencing thing. He does his vocal thing. Uh, yeah, he's a, he is very, very awesome. Who else do you listen to a lot? Oh, uh, uh, there's so much. There's so, I'm I'm a music junkie, so um, but I'm I'm I listen to a lot of new stuff, but I'm I'm definitely very old school. I love Rainbow, um, uh, uh, you know Led Zeppelin, you know yeah Dio. Dio, you know Dio is one of Leather's favorites. You know Leather. Oh yeah, 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 and and you can tell because she emulated him. I mean, she's got her own thing. Uh, you know, but I can tell where she got that from. She must have been um, a Dio fan early on. And I'm such a fan of hers. I'm a huge fan. And it's so ironic that I actually, you know, got the job that I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and had those shoes to fill after. And it was such a freaky thing. I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Holy shit. You know, because <laughs> she was my idol. You know, she's a person that I really but really the cool thing is you to. you and, made it uh, your own. That's what was cool about when your your years in Chastain. And you were in Chastain for what, like ten years? Yeah, ten yeah. years. For three and, you, hours. and that's what was great is you made it your own. You didn't try to be her. You were Kate. Well, I tried. <laughs> well, but I mean, but you did your well. thing. You did your Which thing. Which is a though. good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I no, thought it was cool. Just... I thought that you did a you did a great. I want. I did. I did want to. Um, I was curious. So I know we chatted about this a little bit before we started the interview, but um, so your first band, mm -hmm. which I have a tape. Reds and Chains. Yeah. Yes. Tantrum right here. It's right. Kind of to see. I got right. a glare. Hi, June, by the way. Yeah. So tell me about, tell me about starting uh, like your first band. How did you get, so I know, I know you were, you were singing in the choir in high school and right. So when did kind of, what was the transition? Like, I'm going to be a metal singer. Like when did, would, Kind of how well, the transition, happen? I was in, like I said, I was in, you know, I had an apartment and my roommate bailed on me and I was like, oh, fuck, you know, I got I'm 18 years old and I, how am I going to make this work? And there was this guy that lived around the corner from me. His name was Ray and Ray was a, an Ingve wannabe, you know, he was like, he'd do the Ingve licks and he'd do the things. He was just such a, he put his cigarette in the guitar stock and he'd make the moves <laughs> and he had like no teeth and he was. <laughs> this coolest guy though he was just an awesome dude and uh he brought home uh chastain record and he was like dude you gotta hear this you gotta check this out i, I have so many guy friends they're like dude you know <laughs> <laughs> so um uh but and i got the chastain record and i put it on and i was like what the hell he's like that is a chick and from that point on, I was sold because I've always been a very strong singer. Uh, you know, I always like predominantly strong uh, women singers and Pat Benatar, uh, you know, Taylor Dane was one. And uh, one of the, they're just, I like that kind of ballsy thing. And that was kind of the step up and it kind of set her apart and made her unique. And, and it was like my voice. So that's what I wanted to do. So uh, years go by. Uh, I, you know, get out of that apartment. I, I actually was going to go to the next apartment and I met this, um, and met up with my friend who was supposed to put the deposit down for me and she did a show. So I went to this 7-Eleven and I was crying. I, I, I didn't have a place to live, you know? And, uh, and this lady was like, honey, I'll get your roommate right now. Well, my roommate that she was talking about was my next boyfriend who was a guitarist. Oh, wow. So the guitarist, I'm leading up to June, I promise. <laughs> no. So so the guitarist, uh, you know, from, he wanted to enter this guitar contest, right? And there was like 250 people doing this guitar contest, a hot day, hot as hell in, in Roseville, California for a 98.5 rock. Oh, I think it was 98.5. I can't remember what it was. So so we go and we sit for hours and we're, you know, he's going and he gets up and he fucking, he sucked. He didn't do very good at it. He, but something happened. And then June gets up, which is the guitarist for Tantrum. And she's like, you know, she does her thing. But the thing about June was she was always a great performer. You know, it, it sets her apart. She can really perform when she 
plays. And then I had my other friend who I told you, I have a lot of instructor friends whose name was Tom Levin Armstrong. And he was teaching June to play guitar. So it was the last two, it was Tom and June against each other. And they had 98 seconds to solo against each other. One got up after the other and June won. Wow. So out of 250 guys, this one little Italian girl won you know, the whole oh, thing. Cool. And so I walked up to her, I was like, dude, I got to get your phone number. You know, I was like, we got to, you know, we got to jam. And, and so she called me or I called her. I can't remember. And I had them over. She had a girlfriend that actually played too to my place. I was living at the time and uh, we jammed and I said, well, you want to, you know, you want to do it. And they're like, yeah. So I, you know, went around to my instructor guy friends and I said, uh, dude, you know, you know, of a, a good drummer to my friend, Mark, who played um, drums and instructed at Skip's Music in Sacramento. And he got me this girl, Nina, and she was a great drummer. And then, you know, we looked for a bass player at Skip's Music, the same place and put ads out and, and we just got it together. And, and we had such a great time. You know, that was a great time. 18 years old. I remember driving down the road, you know, and, and on the radio comes uh, Tantrum opening for Winch tonight and they're wearing no clothes. <laughs> 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 and they would say shit like that and I'd, you know, crack up because they were trying to draw people and, right. it was, you know, not the way it was, but it was just a fun time. <clears throat> you know, I worked for a title company. I always worked 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, but then I would come home you know, and I go out, I'd save my $2, drive down and to see live music and, and come back. And then I go to, you know, rehearsals and stuff. And then we go to our gigs or I go jet skiing on the lake and stuff. And it was just a really fun time, even though it was really hard and I was alone, you know, and I was yeah. making my own living and, and doing my own thing. And I didn't make much. It was a great time. And, um, you know, I'm really thankful that I had the opportunity to, to do that because it's really, you know, it's what started me into that. And then after that ended, I got with a guy that, I don't know if you know, Carl Albert, do you know who he is? Okay. You know, Vicious Rumors. familiar. Yeah. Vicious Rumors. Do you know who Oh yeah. Is? Yeah. Vicious. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, great so band. It was their original singer when they were on Atlantic records. Okay. So prior to Carl being in Vicious Rumors, he was in a band called Ruffians and then he was in a band called Villain and with my next bandmate who was Leon Smith and he was Carl's guitarist. So <clears throat> Carl went to uh, Vicious Rumors and I got in this band a few years later when they reformed. So I was singing Carl's songs. Mm. So going from singing tantrum songs that I sang to singing this guy who was a basically virtuoso singer it forced me into this and they were fucking mean. I mean, they were like, no, off, no, wrong, blah, blah, blah. And there were so many times that I'd like take my PA system. I'm like, fuck you guys, you're dicks. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> you know, and I'd be gone. I'd be out of there. And then I, they'd be like, no, you're awesome. Come back. I'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, the next step up uh, of a learning experience. And I was in a band called Machine Gun Kelly. And uh, then after that, uh, I think I had done like a love symphony or couple, couple bands here and there, but then I went down to, in fact, I went down to Los Angeles with June, June mm. and I, I wouldn't, nobody would go with me. So June drove me down there. I'm just remembering that. And June was actually with me when I stumbled over the table to give David Chastain the tape that got me the audition that, that made my life different. You know, wow. she was with me. She was standing right next to me. So now, now I better apologize to June. <laughs> We've been in a fight. She was like, she's like, you got your news off of YouTube. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> see ya. And then she said some shit and it's stupid. And, uh, you know, maybe the song that I'm writing right now about forgiveness is telling me to shut the fuck up and open up a can of forgiveness, you know, and, yeah, maybe, and uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. I think a lot of times things are presented to us in front of us, um, you know, for a reason. When, when something happens, it is because the, the universe is telling you something, you know? Yeah, so when you hear a sign, when you, when you see something and, and you think, huh, okay, why am I, you know, especially songwriting when I feel like you channel, you know, a lot of stuff that comes up, you know, soul, uh, your energy and, and energy. It's, I think we're all connected. You know, I really do. I think we're all, you know, the source, we're, the life force that we have inside of us. I think it's electricity. I think it's out, you know, it, it's something that connects us universally. But I think when you feel 
like emoting or just saying something or something is coming across that there's a purpose and a reason for it. Maybe that person is thinking about you, you know, and now I'm going off on my podcast because I no, do shit like this on my no, podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> so let me help you. <laughs> what supplements are you taking? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of my story of my historical account of everything up to Chastain. And then, you know, the story of, you know, of uh, Vainglory, which was a Chastain band, Leviathan Records band. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from there, I just kind of grew to this. And like I said, and I think we were talking when we were offline or where we weren't doing your interview here in the almost famous thing, you know. I kind of wish that I was in those days of the 80s when everybody, you know, had the big, you know, audience and Lita Ford. I wish that I could have been kind of more along those lines. But yeah, at I, the same time, I think it's a blessing and a curse for them. I agree. You know, I think I, agree. I think a lot of times and they're still stuck in that and they're still doing that after all these years. I, I think that, you know, I went down to Mexico and uh, we played a show down there, Vainglory. In Mexico, they know me for some reason more. In I guess I had more advertisement in magazines down there or something. But we played this show called um, Monterey Metal Fest. And I felt like fucking Madonna. I mean, they were fucking people coming after me and shit. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and Corbin actually had to pull me out of this crowd. And I am a people lover. I love people. So I was like, you know, in with them and taking pictures and everything. But he had to pull me literally by my arm. And I thought about that, you know, small amount of time that I was in that thing that somebody that's really famous would have. And I thought, that's kind of fucked up. Yeah, it's scary. You know, get, you know they don't get freedom. They don't get the... You know, if they're, they can't go out, they can't do anything. I mean, it, without constantly getting a barrage of, you know, that oh, sign this for me or do this or, you know, oh, you're, you know, I remember one time we were, Larry and I, uh, you know, he, he played around uh, Sacramento or San Francisco a lot. Larry is in Vicious Rumors. He's my ex-husband. He uh, plays drums, but we were doing a gig with the Van Halen guy, um, the bass player. What's his name? Oh, Michael Anthony. Michael Anthony, yeah. And, and he comes out of the bathroom and he's like, that dude was just asking for my autograph at the urinal, you know? So <laughs> yeah. he's pissed. You know, he's like, I can't fucking get away from this shit. Yeah. So in hindsight, you know, I do wish that, but it's kind of, I guess it's a blessing and a curse for those people that do have that when you really think about it. So yeah, I agree. I, I think it's, I, I do, I will say, I think it's, it's a travesty. I think it's criminal uh, almost that, um, you know, Tantrum didn't have the kind of fame that I think, you know, that band deserved and Chastain as well. I mean, Chastain was a much bigger band and had some fame, but uh, it was such a weird, like the 90s were such a weird time. Uh, for the 90s metal. were a, a weird time. And, you know, I was just talking about being a, a fan of, of Kip Winger and um, they had this thing. I'm a, I'm in a Kip Winger group because I, I just love the whole, you know, I love them, Paul, and their writing and just everything that they do. But they have a show right now that's on Paramount Plus, and he's telling about that time and the transition between the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. you know, and what he went through. And he, you know, he said he was just basically canceled, you know, and it has all the people on there that were, um, you know, going through that time and that that ended. Um, but yeah, you know, you do as someone that is, you know, almost famous, feel like you, you missed the boat you know, a little bit, because I guess you, you want some recognition for what you do, but I, I don't want to ever be selfish or, or, or come off as a self-centered person to anybody in any way, because I've never been that way, even if, if someone, and that's another thing, and that I find that people that are to that level, they don't, they don't pay enough attention to the people that are, are recognizing them, and I feel like if someone recognizes you, and takes the time out to listen to your music that you should have some gratitude for that you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and a lot of people don't have that gratitude a lot of times they're like you know you'll say oh that was fantastic and they're like you know okay you know whatever and but uh, and that's another thing that being almost there does is that it, it makes you realize and be really grateful for the people or the person that took the time to listen to your song or look at your painting or watch your podcast. So, you know, there's purpose for everything. And I guess, you know, that's, it's fine where it is. I, I don't want to be on tour at 54. 
I, I you know, I, Vixen, they're friends of mine hmm. and Lorraine and, uh, yeah, you know, she's in her, right now. Yeah. She's in her sixties. Yeah. She, I was going to do something for her and I sent her a video, uh, a few months back and it didn't pan out, but, um, you know, that must be hard. That must be really hard life. And, and, uh, she's beautiful and she, she, she made it though as a young person, but she's still and Roxy and they're still touring. They're still, they're still doing it yeah. and it's consistent. You know, they're never home. And Linda's the same way with Iron Maiden. She does her thing. I mean, I don't know. Would you want that lifestyle? I, not in my fifties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean kid, me, I'm sure it's great, but you know, yeah. Once you get older, it's like, that's gotta be, that's a slog. And especially if you're not, you know, that top tier kind of level where you're still, you know, like you mentioned, like, yeah, you're living in a van. Exactly. You know, exactly. That's, Can that's you imagine they're on the road? It's 105 fucking degrees. And, yeah. you know, you're, I mean, I don't know, you know, I, I, for me, I think I'm good. I, I have a house. I have a little farm. I have five acres. I have two horses. Oh, nice. I have lots of chickens and I made that for myself. I bought this. You know, I work for this and I bought this on my own and I, I feel, you know, I feel fortunate. It's my little, it's my little piece of heaven. I, I'm a nature girl. I like to go out and, and, and look at plants in the sky and, and look at my beautiful little animals and, you know, pet my horse and hug him every day. In fact, I'll probably hug him right after I'm, I'm looking at the time. <laughs> I gotta feed him pretty soon. I feed him the last time at like 10. Uh, but, you know, I like, I like that, you know, I like my life and sometimes, you look at the highlight reel from someone's life and you don't realize that. And I, I talked to my husband about that and I said, man, cause I love to perform. I fucking love to perform. I miss that. There's this thing that goes on when you've got this huge PA behind you and you're hearing the bass drum, but I don't know if I'd want it like consistently for a year or two years, yeah. you know? And David Chastain, he's like, I don't think I'm going to do shit again. So don't even count on it, you know, because uh, I think he's over it. I think everybody that's older is kind of over it. And I think even Kip and Winger, I think this is their last go around. I don't know, you know, what they're doing, but I, I just think, you know, I think that it was good when we were younger, but I, I don't think I could do it at this age. And I think I'm, I'm grateful for where I'm at. So I'm rambling. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's great. Well, and that, that being said, I was, I was, I was curious that. And I'm only drinking because you are. Okay. <laughs> no. Cheers. Uh, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Um. Yeah. Oh, I, I was curious. Like I know. I know. Like yeah. Touring definitely is not your thing. But I, I was curious. You know, especially with the re-release of the album. Do you? Will there be any Vain Glory shows? Will there be any live shows? So we've got this manager, and he's awesome, Benjamin. You know Benjamin. I do know Benjamin. I love Benjamin. Great guy. He's, good. he's a good dude, and uh, it just depends on what he wants us to do. Um, and if he gets like a one-off, we'll probably do one-off here and there, but I, gosh, I would love to get on a big stage and, you know, really do that. But, uh, you know, we're Corbin and I do everything on our own and, and just getting a couple of great musicians together and going out is something that we can do. No problem. You know, go and play a one-off show, practice a couple days and then go out. So that wouldn't be any problem. So we're not opposed to it. You know, we're not opposed to doing something, um, it would be great to just do that once and then come home and, you know, and go back out. Uh, but, you know, it's open. It's something that, uh, that we would do if he had something that was fantastic. He goes, okay, we got this opening slot for, you know, Judas Priest is going to play on this. And then you, you know, you guys can open here and I'm like, Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you know, nice. see ya. Um, but I, I was talking to someone the other night because I've been doing interviews too, and they were talking about where I would want to play if we did play something else. And and we were talking about that seventy thousand, the tons of metal. I've have been you, have you been on those at all? I've been on my my wife and I went on one for our honeymoon. Nice. And, uh, it was incredible. It was amazing. Was it? Yeah. What are the boats like? Are they like all inclusive? Were you? Yeah, and it's it's bizarre because you're on this gigantic luxury ship, and it's all metalheads. I so, love that. Like that's it, and it's kind of cool. And they're my wife's not a massive metalhead; she likes yeah. some metal, but um, but she even she said this multiple times. She's like, metalheads are so nice. Like, like she loved it. She everybody was so friendly and you know, and and you know, and there was some rowdiness. Of course, it's metalheads. You know, there'd be right. pits. At, you know, because there's, 
you know, multiple stages on the boat. Uh, I think there were four stages. Um, so are people playing constantly? Yeah, it's there's 60 bands. They wow. play twice. Larry's been on it. Yeah, in fact, he was on the sh the yeah, Vicious Rumors played on the on my the the time I went. I went in 2019. Okay. So, yeah, yeah he Rumors likes to go and do the karaoke thing, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. seen video of him doing that. Yeah. He's a really nice guy. I mean, I you know, I got together with him um and he's my son's uh, dad he's a really nice dude you know it just I think he he still wanted to tour and do his thing and and that's fine you know he's been touring since he was really young and back in the Atlantic days he he was getting whatever he wanted let's just put it that way mm -hmm. <laughs> because he was on Atlantic and you know that was his lifestyle and so um I think he kind of I think a lot of people kind of get stuck on that too stuck mm -hmm. on that vagabond thing you know Right. It's kind of an addiction, I think. So he he really enjoys that, and he's still doing it. I don't know. I, th I don't know if he's on tour now. He might be. He he um, I think he's playing the guy that um sang for Metal Church. Oh yeah, has is singing for them now. Nice. So, uh, but you know, he's fun. Nice. If you if you said hi, he would be like, dude, give me a hug. <laughs> Yeah. You know, he's one of those kind but of. But I, I, I think, yeah, I think Vainglory, that's a good fit. I think that would be a great fit. I think you, uh, you should look into that. I would love to do that. I would love to get all meddled out again in my little black leather corsets and do my thing and and have some fun and and uh, you know, uh, maybe not a corset this time. Maybe I'll just wear a t-shirt. <laughs> maybe a Flotsam and Jetsam t-shirt. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I, I don't know. Uh, the horses were kind of uncomfortable, but you know, just to get out and, and especially in um on the ocean. I've never been on a ship. That was my first time, and it was it was pretty cool. It was so so. Did you want to? Did you want to hurl? Did you? No, did you... I the, the only the first night we got into a little bit of choppy water, and uh, I had a press pass, so I was taking photos of the opening band, the first band that played which yeah. is the lane and that was inside in the theater and the oh, nice. boat was rocking a little bit and that's uh, when i was like and but as i'd been drinking so i'm like is, uh, is it the boat or is it me <laughs> 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 but yeah. after that i was fine and then it was it was very calm i've heard horror stories i know there's been times where they've had you know they've run into storms and it gets pretty nasty and yeah, there's yeah even times they've had to like lock everything down like and they you know nobody could play and it was like I, oh, shit. Did, yeah, but I think that's that's far and few between. I think it's that would suck. I guess you'd have to kind of check and maybe you know make sure that that kind of thing doesn't happen. That would suck. Yeah, I remember seeing videos of that kind of thing too. Larry told me that he they played the Netherlands and I think it's a Black Sea or something that they had to travel across. There's some really turbulent um, part of the ocean there that they have to travel across when they're touring, and he said that it got hairy that it was so bad that the boat was you know popping up and this is more like a a ferry and he was just like so sick from it uh oh. but yeah I, you know i would love to just check it out how was the food it was good it was you know it's, it's i mean did not... they have like a you know where you could go and get food and drinks anywhere you wanted to or yeah any 24 7 oh yeah, really? always yeah was it like a buffet type deal yeah yeah it's mostly buffet and then they have like little restaurants some are open some are not open all the time but some are all the time uh you can get pizza at any point you know, like you know three o'clock in the morning if you want a pizza you can get a pizza uh, i would love to there's, try that you know bars everywhere so i would get so fucking cool. crazy oh my god i am it gets a little nuts i we didn't sleep a lot that was and that was the problem is there's so many bands you want to see um and they're all playing. I mean, yeah, I mean, the fr I think the first they start bands start playing at like 10 o'clock in the morning and it oh, wow. goes until like five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, depending on. I mean, there's just bands playing all day long. You know, there's four stages and they yeah. just rotate there. So most play, I think it's like 30 minute sets. Yeah. Um, they might do like a 30 minute set and then a 45 minute set. But yeah, every band plays twice. And then there's, you know, there's bigger bands that'll play like, you know, on the big stage on the, on the deck. Yeah. Um, so when we, uh, so when we went, the big closing band was the Cavalera brothers. Um, so, so it was Soulfly and then the Cavalera brothers. So they did Sepultura's roots in its entirety. That was the closing act. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, it was cool because it's all different, all different subgenres of metal. I mean, you have folk metal, you have thrash metal, you have death metal, you have black metal, you have everything, you know, power metal, everything you, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, so, so who did you see on there that was your favorite? Oh, yeah, there were so many great bands. Um, some of my favorite. You, who did you uh, remember? Who did you like take away? And you went, oh, they were uh, really good. Sodom. Uh, one because they never come to America. Um, yeah, so it was cool, really cool to see Sodom. I think, I think we played with them in in Monterey. I think. Oh, we really? With them. Yeah, yeah, I that think was so. Cool. I remember their um, I remember their logo kind of. They were really good, huh? Yeah, they were great. Na Napalm Death was amazing. Um, Camelot was great. Uh, we played with Camelot. Unleash the Archers. Um, who else? I it was. It was a little overwhelming. I, I mean, it's kind of like a sensory overload. Um, yeah. You know, there's yeah, that's a awesome. Lot. I, there's a I lot. love, I love art, you yeah. know, and, and music is art. You know, mm. I could walk around and look at, you know, go in a gallery and look at stuff or I, I just love, I love it. You know, I, I, that would be a really interesting thing. I'm going to have, is there, is there like two things? I know there's 70 thousand tons of metal and then there's like a rock cruise too isn't there yeah and i think there's some others as well because um, i know i know that the winger band does that and i know there's other like more of a tame like uh 80s metal hair metal i can't remember what that one's called and then there's the fifty thousand or seventy thousand tons of metal yeah I 70, remember seeing that. yeah and i know like uh mega the mega cruise megadeth does one. Oh, okay it's smaller it's a sm it's not as many bands but um and I know they That'd did a, a great, you yeah. know, I have a mega death story, which, oh. which is, uh, fucking. <laughs> so, so, uh, Dave Mustaine has a, I guess a, a relative or something. And her name is, her name is Kate French or something. And, and there was a, there was a radio show and I was listening to it and, uh, Dave says, Kate French, come down and pick up your tickets at blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I thought he knew me. And he was like, saw me sing. And he's like, oh, you know, it was his fucking relative. <laughs> <laughs> he came to Atlanta and he was trying to track down someone or something on the radio. And I thought it was me. And then I, you know, I wrote him on his site. And I was like, oh, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> it's me. I'm Kate oh, French. I'm Kate French. It wasn't me. <laughs> Does he know? He should. You, so, but he would you, be fun to play with. You know, oh, he, yeah, yeah. He would be a very fun guy. That's that sounded really wrong, but um, <laughs> he would be very fun. He would be a fun guy to open for. Um, my husband is like a huge Megadeth fan. He he says nice. he's really tight with his uh, playing, and, and he really respects him. And you oh, know, I we're, love big, we're big Metallica fans. We love Hetfield, and yeah, and uh, so yeah. I mean, they would fit us. I would love to do something with them. Maybe doing oh, a cruise cool. with them would be good. You know, the smaller, more boutique. Yeah, cruise. it's. Um, I think they've got like maybe 10, 15 bands on that. On that. Oh, uh, that's perfect. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a smaller. It's and it's. I don't think it's as many. It's. I don't think it's as long. Um, but I know. I think the last one. I think Armored Saint played on it. I didn't okay. go. I had some friends that went, and they told me about it. So yeah, it was Megadeth. You know, obviously they're the headliner, but yeah, I think Armored Saint played and. I think Death Angel was on that cruise as well. Um, yeah, it just sounded really cool. It was kind of more, more kind of thrashy, but, um, but yeah, it just sounded like it'd be a blast. It sounded yeah, really fun. yeah. Any of that, any of that, I'll have to check that out. How much did it cost? Was it really expensive? It wasn't terrible. I think it was mm, not including flights. It was around, and again, this was 2019. This was. I think around two grand per person, but that included everything. So well, all your food, bad. yeah, with everything the, with the hotel room and with everything. Yeah, that's well, everything. not not alcohol. That did not include alcohol. I guess it used to include alcohol. Did but you bring alcohol? No, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. Yeah, yeah that would be smart. Uh, I don't. Pack yeah, that shit yeah. Up. yeah, no, yeah. but it, it, it's not. I mean, it's it's yeah, it, it's. It, it, yeah the, um i guess I, I had heard um the first couple years i guess of the seventy thousand tons of metal that alcohol was included but yeah. um you know because you've got 60 bands metal yeah. bands and then two two or three thousand guests metal guests and apparently the first year it was either the first year or the second year of the cruise um they drank all the alcohol 
on the trip <laughs> in like three days. So they oh, had to go to wow. port to get more alcohol because it was gone. Wow, so, wow that's funny. And that that's was when it was out. included. So now they charge you extra because like, you know, to try to keep people like, okay, don't drink everything. So, right, right. We actually, um, <laughs> this is funny. Um, when I got married to Larry, you know, we had the metal heads you know, come to the wedding and whatnot. All the metal people were there. And uh, we did a bunch of alcohol uh, in our reception. And it was in the same kind of area. It was the church. And then we had a, a big, um, like an area, uh, I don't know what it was, like a gym type area that had all the alcohol in it on the table. And, you know, when I got in there, there's no fucking alcohol. <laughs> I was so fucking pissed at my own wedding. Yeah, there was nothing. Not they had fucking drunk as dry. It was gone. <laughs> oh, no. So, I, um, you know, and back then I was, I don't know, 20, you know, 29. And I did love to drink all the time. Uh, so, but I got to... Um, I got to sing uh, with the original members of Vicious Rumors in my wedding dress. Oh, that's I sang, cool. uh, Did I sing Abandoned? Abandoned again. Oh, I sang yeah. Abandoned in my wedding dress. That's and, awesome. Uh, and it was, I was getting all like evil in my wedding dress. It was really funny. <laughs> that is amazing. Did that get filmed? Is that? No, I wish it was. I wish oh, it was because it was me and it was Jeff Thorpe and it wow. was Mark McGee. And I don't think, I think Tommy was there. It wasn't Dave. It wasn't Dave Starr. It was Tommy and um, Larry, you know, who I had just married. He was on the drums. And so I, I've i sat in with them a few times before. Um, I love that song. Abandon, have you heard that? Yeah, great song. Great yeah. Song. So <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, uh, and, you know, I miss that. that. That was fun. It was fun singing with them when I had the opportunity to, to when Carl died um i got to sing with them a lot and that was that was weird um you know and they were looking for vocalists they, they've been through a lot of vocalists uh since carl died and he was i think the best the vocalist i've ever heard live i you don't think he ever fucking was off key or ever made a mistake you know nothing nothing i mean flawless i don't know if you know of a lot of vocalists like that but like not one sound exactly like the record spot on perfection yeah. So, um, and then he, he was, um, he was traveling from, uh, Alameda to San Rafael to go to a gig. He played guitar and he, he really wanted to play guitar and sing and nobody would ever let him play guitar and sing in the shroomers because they had two, two guitarists and he was in like a 240Z or a 280Z and he had amplifiers in the back. Right. And he's going towards San Rafael on I-80 and he went down to reach for a tape and, uh, this car went off the road and he hit a tree doing 70 miles an hour and all of his amplification hit him in his head. Jeez. And um, and then his he was gone. His brain swole. The, the car, you know, they had to get the jaws of life to get him out. And I saw him, um, you know, just before he died, he had a wrap on his head and stuff. And, um, and then I saw him in his coffin. That was fucking weird. Uh, was bizarre but he was a he was an incredible singer i don't know how many of your uh, uh of their albums you have but i was a fan before i knew larry and i i really wasn't interested in larry but we just became friends and that's kind of how the whole thing started you know i never really judge anybody on this specific thing i always kind of get to know somebody and then you know I, I don't even know corbin what he looked like or anything before i started like liking him you know what i mean i don't base my thing off of that and and um so we just started to be friends and then that kind of friendship led one thing to another and then we ended up um, getting married but um, the carl thing you know and his son is a singer carl albert's son his name is kevin and he actually got to go to a metal festival in germany and sing with Vicious Rumors a set of Carl's, his dad's oh. songs, oh, that's Kevin cool. Albert. And so that was a really cool thing. That was uh, Keep It True. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's so nice. there's video of that, um, Kevin Albert. And uh, uh, we did a memorial, and Leon was there, my one bad apple guy, because he was in the same band, and uh, Larry, and, and they had a big memorial for Carl up at um, some, I can't remember, some woody, woodsy place where he used to live or something, but uh he was a good guy. It's just so sad. I mean, like I said, you know, in like my song, you just never know what's going to happen if someone's going to be here or not from one moment to the next. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that was very unexpected. You know, you never think that someone that's so vibrant and alive can be gone in the next second. So. 
that's very true yeah so true. count our blessings every day every day that you're you know you've been given another day is a good day yeah I yeah agreed. <laughs> agreed cheers to that cheers yep to that. cheers um, so I don't want to keep you all night, but I do have one last question for you. Okay. Um, so as you know, my page is Brews and Tunes. So I pair craft beer with metal, mostly metal, hard rock albums. Okay. Um, so I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. So I know you don't, you haven't been drinking a lot in the last little drink. while, yeah, but, um, but if you were to be drinking and it's, you know, a Friday night, what are you drinking and what album are you spinning? You want me to say, what's your say parent? Yeah, you what's your you parent? want me to say you want me to say beer? It doesn't have to be beer. It can be anything. Uh, I'll do I'll do beer. Okay. I'll do beer. Hops executioner. Oh, that's a great name. Who that's makes a beer. That? Who makes that, that? is uh it's by the dudes that make pale ale. It's um fuck now I'm gonna fucking totally Oh I've had that. It. I know what you're talking about. The hops executioner. Sierra yeah. Nevada? Is that Sierra? Yeah, Nevada? it well Sierra Nevada, it's by this, I think it's by the same uh tap. It's in Athens. It's a it's a small brewery oh, company. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, Terrapin. Uh, is it Terrapin? No, is Terrapin the beer? I can't fucking remember. I'm drawing a blank on it. But right. it's a good beer, and it gets you fucking lit. I mean, you're like, <laughs> oh, one beer, and you're feeling no pain. Um, funny story about beer. Here's something you're not going to dig too much. But, um, you know, my husband uh, was very into beer and used to drink a shit ton of beer, too much beer. He drank a lot of beer. And then he switched to these, you know, Hopsecutioner and things like that because they were higher end beers because he started to get fucking gout. You know what gout Ooh, is? Yeah, yeah. 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 So he was basically an alcoholic. He drank all the time. He'd have like a, he's not an alcoholic. He'd have like a 12 pack, you know, every, every day on the weekend or something. I don't know. He would drink too much. So, um, so he started to drink the the higher end beers and he was like, I'm okay now. You know, I can drink still. And that fucking shit caught up to him and he got gout and his ankle swole up like ginormous in his toes. And he was, he was couch ridden and bedridden for three months to where he could not put a sheet on his toe. So be careful with your, with your gout. Um, um, what did he say? Um, if you're drinking a lot of beer and you are experiencing any kind of slight pain um, and you, you know, you think you might be getting it, take some baking soda and put it in water and stir it up and drink it. And mm. it takes that away. So hopefully you'll never get gas. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> but yeah, because you're fucked. I mean, forget yeah. it, forget it. And and from what I've heard, and Larry has it too, actually, the pain is absolutely excruciating. Uh, and I've, I've never had it, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah. So, so, you know, drink sparingly and, and be careful for that. But if you do ever feel like you do, apparently a baking soda and water will clear all that shit out. So it's purines, you know, it's, it's a crystallization in your toes hmm. that happens. It, it turns into crystals and they rub together against the bone and the cartilage. Hmm. I'm, I'm letting you, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> trying to give you a visual here. It's yeah. Just, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so so be careful for the old gout monster because once you get that, you're you're screwed. So that's my story about beer and and he can't drink it anymore. He's actually out there right now drinking some red wine. So that's his thing that he drinks. You know, he'll have some red wine here and there, but he still will get gout now and then. He's not on anything. I don't he I don't think that it's a good idea for anyone to be on anything. You know, that is pharmaceutical for any length of time. I mean, people have to and people do, but uh, you know, he's he he's doing okay. He had. Uh, he had a kidney issue from the gout, from the purines going through his bladder. And he started to experience blood coming out places that they weren't supposed to. Ooh. And he went to the hospital for that. And they said that it's something that just ruptured from the purines, from this stuff in his kidneys. And uh, so once that happened, he's like, fuck this shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, <I'm done. laughs> when, uh, yeah, when you look at him, you're like, okay, that's blood in the toilet. Yeah. You know, and so uh, he he changed his thing up a little, and he's he's better now. He's healthier. We're both trying to be healthier as we get older because, you know, we want to live as long as we possibly can, and we realize that you know, we we need to try now, and that's yes. why I lost all the weight that I did, and um, I had uh, after COVID. Did you have COVID ever? Yes, I had yes. It three times. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, I had heart palpitations after and I was a little bit overweight and I, 
I just decided that I, I didn't want to die because I felt like every night, you know, in my sleep, my heart would beat really, really hard. So I just changed my life. I was like, fuck this shit. You know, what am I doing? And so I quit sugar and I quit caffeine and I quit everything. And I, I just decided that I'm going to, you know, just uh, enjoy life and, and not worry about that stuff and focus on art, focus on what I do in my music. So that's what I've been doing. So take good care of yourself. And if you feel an ache or pain, baking soda and water. That, so that's my that's my podcast for you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Thank you for <laughs> the advice. Like it helps it. so that you yeah. don't get that. Cause if you start feeling any kind of ache or pain in your joint, you don't want to ever go through that. You don't want to get gout. No. So that'll stop no. it. It'll it'll cure out the purines if you drink that. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, that, that's good to know. Uh, <laughs> oh, so so circle back. So okay, so the the popsecutioner, is that the name of it? Popsecutioner, yeah. Popsecutioner. And I think it's and then, by it is it is by Terrapin Brewing Company out of Athens, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, Terrapin. And I terrapin, just spilled yeah. some of those. I haven't drank very yeah. much of it. I just spilled some of this all over my carpet. My carpet will smell good. It's apple. Apple, what is this? Apple Jack Daniels. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, apple Tennessee apple. It's pretty good. Just that chick drink. We got a little mm-hmm. little apple martini glass with it. Um uh, so Thank you for having me on here. Thank I appreciate you so it. much. Yeah, this is great. So everybody watching, definitely pick up the new uh, re-released. Uh, yeah, the the double, double album. And yeah. if you order now, you can get it signed. You got to hurry though, because these are going to sell out pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can get it on our Facebook page on Vainglory, but it's the you know it's a catalog of everything that I've done, and it's nice. It's a booklet. It's you know full color. It's all the words. It's everything. Uh, and it's a really great value uh, for what you're getting. And uh, yeah, grab it because they're going to run out fast. We don't have very many of them. So, but you can also get the, if you just want to get an album on um, animated insanity records, animated insanity or no dust records in Europe. So they've been kind enough to be the people that um, re release this and, and repressed it for us. And it's remastered as well. Nice. Nice. Links in the links in the description below um to check that out and definitely check it out if you've not heard vainglory before you definitely want to check out vainglory kick ass just killer in your face you. high you adrenaline think, heavy metal do you think i sound like a dude no you think my voice sounds like a guy's voice or a girl's no, voice? no i think it's i think it's i think you sound like a woman but i, but I love the aggressiveness to it because um, because nowadays girls sound like girls when they sing I don't hear a lot of girls like with the distortion type of thing on their voice. They're mostly doing the fairy princess or the cookie monster. Yeah. It's yeah. usually one of the two. I would see the, it's like the, that kind of a in-between art form has kind of died. It's kind of gone, but yeah. I, I have a lot of men that have said that, you know, they'll review stuff. And I guess it's just the average Joe, the people that don't know music, but they'll review it and they'll be like, man, this guy is so good. <laughs> I think I'm a dude. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I think, I think your voice is different with vainglory than it was previously oh. made. well i mean tantrum was was never signed and that was when i was 18 years old yeah. you know that was a little demo tape that we did we weren't signed anything so when i started getting in chastain and when i started getting in vainglory is when i started kind of developing that thing it's like that hetfield growl you know it's like yeah. that thing yeah. and bon scott i love bon scott too but i have a lot of a lot of uh people say that i sound like a dude and for me that's a compliment Hmm. I like that. I, I like that they don't realize. It kind of makes me kind of a non, like a metal person rather than, yeah, you know, that's yeah. a chick. You know, you're not yeah. going, well, oh, that's a, you could tell that's a chick. You're not going, oh, I can tell that's a dude. You know, you're kind of in the in between and I kind of dig on that. Nice. So. Nice. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Kate, so very much. This has been an absolute pleasure. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, Thank you for talking to me. I enjoy it. We we need to go out to the to the bar and just have like this big old conversation. We'd be flabbing for even in, for hours and hours. In the yeah, evening. definitely. That would be cool. Well, thank you so much again. Uh, ab- absolute pleasure and honor to chat with you. Thank you. It's an honor to chat with you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oops. <laughs>